Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name is Rob Wilson and this is the Hyundai i30 N. And now that the Honda Civic Type R is £50,000, is this the front wheel drive manual hot hatchback to go for? Okay then, so let's start at the front as we usually do, where we can see that, unsurprisingly, it looks like a normal i30, but spruced up, meaner, tougher, with things like this large splitter at the front, which is finished in red, so that you know that it is sporty. You've also got an N badge on the grille, and little grooves cut out as well to make it look extra mean. Big air intakes on either side, and the grille as standard, but yeah, it just looks meaner, tougher, more hot hatchback E. So, what we'll do is we'll move on to the side where we find some rather nice N inspired 19 inch alloy wheels. Behind, we've got some red N brake calipers, and those alloy wheels are equipped with. Pirelli P0 tyres, so serious stuff here. Working our way along the side, we've got black mirror caps, and then we've got a black N skirt going along the bottom as well. So you know that this car is the hot hatchback version of the i30. Anyway, at the back is where it really starts to look very different from the normal i30 with a big black spoiler up here at the top. We've got a huge diffuser down here at the bottom with massive exhausts on both sides. They are enormous. I could actually fit my whole fist inside those tips. Obviously, there is a real exhaust inside there that's much smaller, but they are whacking great exhausts. And they sound really good, so I'm going to insert a clip of the car revving now. So yes, it looks and sounds a lot more hot hatchback here at the back. Anyway, let's open up the boot, which is push button. I'm going to sit on here because this car has an interesting difference over the standard i30 because normal i30 would have 495 litres of space, but this N version has a structural bar going across most, uh, well, the entirety of the boot. So that means that space drops slightly to around 480 litres of usable space. And that means that it is actually smaller than the Civic and the Focus and the Megane, although that's not on sale anymore. But it is on par or slightly bigger than the Golf, for example. Anyway, there are a couple of bits back here that are quite useful. You've got a 12 volt socket and you have curry hooks on both sides, but there is no false floor. So if you're wanting to push items through, that's gonna be a little bit more tricky. Anyway, let's go and see what the back seats are like. Okay, so here I am in the back seats, and let's start off with how much room I've got back here. I am six foot two or 188 centimeters tall. This driver's seat is in my driving position, and my knees can fit behind the seat reasonably comfortably. Headroom is good as well, actually. Even if I sit all the way up straight, I I'm not touching the roof, which is really good actually. Um, it's quite nice to have that amount of space in the back of any car, let alone a car that is quite compact like the i30N is. In terms of stuff that I've got back here, we are a little bit limited on that front because there are no air vents in the back, so you're going to have to rely on air coming through the center of the car. There is no charging ports. There is nothing here for the backseat passengers. 
Um, you do get an armrest, which is very kind of Hyundai to uh, offer you, and it does have two cup holders in it, but that's about it. Practicality-wise, just touching back on that, you can fit a bottle of water just about in these back door pockets, and in terms of material quality, it's actually pretty good. I've got soft touch even on the tops of the doors. I've got a nice squidgy armrest here. As I said, we've got the armrest in the center. And then the seats themselves have got like a suede material in the middle, and then they are bolstered with leather, which is very posh and premium and nice to see. Anyway, let's hop in the front and see what's going on up there. Okay, so now we are in the front of the i30N, and let's start with the general layout of the front of this car. So, steering wheel in front of me, it is round, which is good. It doesn't have a flat bottom, so that means when you're actually on the limit, it's got every, you know, the steering wheel is going to be where you expect it, um, which is good. I like a sports steering wheel that also is round. On that steering wheel, on uh, this side, I've got volume controls, answering the phone, that sort of stuff, changing the track. Uh, and then on this side, I've got the buttons that control the display in the center of my two analog dials. Uh, you can fiddle around with that. You, you can have all the standard information in there. You've also got a button for keeping you in a lane on a motorway or, or on an A road. That is a very good feature. It's uh, pretty much in every uh, Hyundai or Kia product nowadays and it works really well and I've used it in all of their cars. It's fantastic. There is another button here though that is marked rev which is very exciting because that's the button you press if you want the car to automatically do rev matching for you uh, so if you can't be bothered to heel and toe like me the car will do it for you and it makes you look like a driving hero probably then you've got two very swish looking uh buttons finished in the same color as the exterior of the car, which is the Hyundai Performance Blue. Um, this is your drive mode, so you can pick normal, uh, sport, and uh, eco, funnily enough. Uh, and then this one with the checkered flag is your N mode, uh, which basically puts it in the most aggressive setting uh, that the car can be configured in and turns the exhaust up to 11. As you've already heard, it, it's, it's quite a nice sounding exhaust. Uh, then in the center, you've got the usual Hyundai Kia 10.25 inch touchscreen, which works really well. You can connect your phone up via Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so that's all good. You've got shortcut buttons along the bottom as well, so you're not having to fiddle around uh, too much while you're driving. I like that. Below that, you've got your central air vents and then your climate controls. So you do have uh, two zone climate control up in the front and it's all done on physical dials or buttons for changing the amount of air that's coming through like that. Further down, you have two 12 volt sockets in this little cubby down here with a USB-A charger and that bit down there is a Qi charger so it will charge your phone. Excellent. Then around the manual gear stick you have buttons for your heated seats, three stage on either side, heated steering wheel, parking sensors, reversing camera and a traction control off button which is very exciting. Uh, door bins are enormous, big bottle of water fits fine, also bottle of water fits into these two cup holders very nicely as well. You do have a proper manual handbrake and if I was going to have one criticism it would be that this handbrake is just plastic, it feels like the cheapest handbrake that Hyundai would have, probably off the i10, and personally I would want a nice leather wrap one. 
But if that's really all that I can complain about, it's not doing too badly in my estimations. You do have a central cubby, which is about yay deep, um, which is good. That's also your armrest. And then in your glove box is a decent size as well, but only really big enough for the actual manual to fit in. What I will say is actually these seats are optional extras. There's only two optional extras that you can pick on the i30N, which is to have sports seats, which this has got about 600 quid, and then the paintwork. So uh, another 600 odd quid, uh, 585, I think. Um, so yeah, that, if you want that paintwork, the end performance blue, and this, that's the only option you can really pick, which I like. I like that they just put everything on their car because it's the top spec one. Material quality is all the same up here. Soft on here, soft on the top of the dash. That's all good. Down here is a little bit plasticky, but uh, I'm not too bothered about that really. All the bits that you're gonna to be touching on a daily basis are nice and soft. Anyway, that's enough of the boring stuff. So let's go out and drive it. Okay then, so driving the Hyundai i30N. Let's cut to the chase. <laughs> this is a this is a good car. This is fun. Um, it's not as fast as the Civic Type R. This has 280 horsepower versus the uh, Civic's over 300. Um, but having the 280 horsepower does mean that it is up on rivals such as the uh, Golf GTI and uh, the BMW 128Ti, that's only got 265 horsepower, so very much uh, at the top end of that scale. It does match the Focus ST as well. Somewhere where the ST does beat the i30N is on torque. Uh, this has uh, 292 newton meters of torque, whereas the ST has over 400, but it's not by a massive amount. So how does it feel to drive? Well, uh, as you can probably imagine, it drives really, really well. Um, I've currently got it in just its normal mode, so the steering isn't as heavy as it can be. The throttle response isn't as sharp as it could be, but at the push of a button, I've just put it into sport. The exhaust has got louder. The steering has got heavier, and the whole car feels much, much more alive and awake and ready and eager to please with its fantastic N chassis. I think, you know, we've, we've talked about this a lot on the Buckle Up channel, is these small little N cars, the i20, this, even the Kona are really fantastic to drive. Brakes, um, they're very good, uh, nice and sharp, but not in a bitey way. Yep, lots of feedback through the pedal there as well when you get towards the ABS limits. The gearbox is fantastic, as you would expect with a Hyundai Kia product, as even the i10 and the Picanto have <laughs> excellent gearboxes, which is just so strange, but there you go, they do. In terms of downsides, I guess I shall start by saying that this does like to wander um, in and out of where the cambers are on the road, so when you floor it, the torque will take the car where the road uh, delves and, and cambers go rather than straight ahead, which does make for quite a lively driving experience. Um, but I must say that it can become slightly tiresome after the 10,000th time you've done it, which I have during my time with this car. Cattle Grid reminds me that um, if I do put the i30 into N mode, um, suddenly it becomes very bumpy indeed. This car has adaptive dampers and when it is in that N mode, it is bouncy, it is firm, it is harsh, it is 
not in my opinion uh, for the road um, it is just for the smooth racetrack because even on sort of smooth country back roads like I'm on at the minute I'm getting bounced about and in town forget it it is it's very uncomfortable in that mode but I do understand that it is only meant to be used on the track okay so 0 to 60 is 5.9 seconds yes it does sort of like to lose traction as well in end mode Wee. especially when you're going over bumps like that um, sorry yes yeah, so 0 to 60 for the manual 5.9 seconds for the DCT it's actually 5.4 seconds which is a huge difference half a second is a week uh, when we're talking in hot hatch terms um, I would still go for the manual though because it is such a lovely box to use Wee. It is one hell of a lively car. <laughs> it's scrabbling all over the place. Um, top speed, it has the obligatory 155 mile an hour ticked, as do all of this car's rivals. So that is sort of to be expected in this segment nowadays. Weight wise, this is around the 1.5 ton mark but that basically means it's in the middle of the pack compared to rivals. So nothing really to worry about there. So while we're talking about rivals, let's get on to uh, price because the i30N starts from just over 35,000, but if you want the sports seats, 600 quid, the paints, another 600 quid. So basically you're looking at 36, and a bit thousand pounds for a fully loaded i30 and you can't pick any options um, for example rivals the focus is two grand nearly more expensive uh, the bmw forget it even though it starts cheaper price than the focus by the time you've put all the stuff you want on it it's a gazillion pounds um, the civic as we've said is fifty thousand and the megan you can't actually get anymore so um this really is uh, the cheapest out there at the minute. And from where I'm sitting, also probably the best, bar the Civic. I mean, that is, you know, we all know how good the Civic is, but we're talking about a saving of, well, nearly well, 12,000 pounds over that car. 12 grand. That's a huge amount of money. I just can't help but smile when I'm driving this car. And if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about it, then I don't know what will. Every single part of the driving experience you interact with as the driver, the steering, the gearbox, the pedals, everything is just absolutely fantastic to use. Oh, and the exhaust. By the way, any rattles you can hear is the equipment in here is not the car. Uh, as you know, Hyundai's come with a five-year warranty and this is no different. Um, I will say that this car has done very nearly 14,000 miles and this is a press car. So those 14,000 miles have been done by automotive journalists, which in the real world, you sort of, it's like dog years. You times that figure by five. So um, this car has probably been ragged its entire life by fellow journalists and um, I am amazed at how well screwed together this car still feels. There are no rattles when you take all of my equipment out. Yeah, really fantastic. Can't knock it on build quality. Right, well that's probably enough larking about as much as I'd like to carry on. So let's go back and do a conclusion. Okay then, so the i30N. Well, I like this car. I like this car a lot. It seems to be better than its rivals in enough ways to warrant it being the best all-rounder, excluding the Civic Type R on price because 
frankly, 50,000 pounds is rather a lot for a hot hatchback. There is one problem with this car though, and it is the i20N, the baby brother of this car. That is 10,000 pounds less than this. And do I think it's 10,000 pounds less of a car? No. So if I was gonna buy a front wheel drive hot hatchback with a manual gearbox, ironically, I would go for the i20N. Not saying that this has got anything wrong with it, I just can't stomach 10,000 pounds difference between the cars. This is excellent. The i20N is excellent and 10,000 pounds cheaper. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you want to follow us in other fashions, you can do so by looking at all the links down in the description. And if you want to support us in many different ways, you can do so via channel memberships, you can give thanks, you can have a look at our Patreon, or you can buy some of our merchandise. So do one or all of those things, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.